him all the hate and he grows me and he gets five real big pissed off quick and if you cross him you might drop dead metaphorically of course settling this or never getting bored loves the blood and gold always wanting more freedom from the source they don't really understand until they feel the push apart and if you start shit you'll be heartless in the darkness torn apart quick you let scars rip to be chewed up and discarded and this world ain't right won't accept it negative energy i expect it once it's in your mind it's infectious so fight for your life and reject it you better give me space i'm protective my adrenaline spikes when i'm threatened and if you stay in my way i'm aggressive because when there's no legs it'll kill when i'm desperate Could set you free, 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 free. Show you what this world can really be. Here with me, I could set you free, 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 free. Of the pain and misery and let you be. Here with me. It is Gauntlet Saturday here at the Camelot Smite League. Welcome in, everybody, to the first of our matches today. Going to be a Lancelot Division matchup between Going Ghost and the Cyberpunk Otters. I am Dr. Shrew, joined today by Raptor with Red Rosie Panda on the cameras, as always. Yeah, and today's going to be a really fun day. Matches all throughout the um, day today. We're starting off in the Lancelot Division, and this is a best of one, which means... If you lose, you you are out. You go home. You do not make it to playoffs. So it's super important for both of these teams to come out and just bring their best foot forward immediately. And right off the bat, we are seeing the bands come out. Rapid Fire, Hercules, Sirket, and Al Kwong. Nothing really surprising. They're pretty standard bands. I'm expecting to see maybe a Hell, even a Nox in the, in the coming uh, bands from either side. Yeah, definitely. Both of those two very high, highly prioritized support picks uh, in this current patch meta. Uh, if we don't see them banned, I do imagine that we'll see them picked very early here in the draft. I like the bands we're seeing so far. As you said, pretty standard, all in a, all in a pretty good spot. Uh, I definitely can feel that both of these teams are uh, going to take this seriously. 
Yeah, and the Aphrodite as well as the Marty Chorus, we're just seeing very standard bands here, but that does mean that they're leaving a lot open. Vamana comes to mind as a very strong pick right now. As I mentioned, Hell and Knox, for some reason, are top supports right now, even though mages <laughs> have been banned, or I mean nerfed lately, while supports have not been touched at all. There's the Vamana ban. Um, so I'm expecting to see a Hell, maybe a Kernanos or Ishtar here. Um, I'm very interested to see where going goes goes with this first pick because they did pick it being the higher seed. They did. I I I think I agree with you that uh, the dual lane might be the place that they uh, opt to focus here, picking up one of those uh, strong ADCs right now in the in the CERN or the Ishtar would be would be good ways to start off this all important draft. Yeah, going goes hovering and locking in that Karnos, as I said, just a really 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 strong uh, duo laner right now. Him and Ishtar are two of the best, hands down. They just use the crit meta extremely well. Uh, you could go with Jing Wei or Rom as well, but no one out pressures the Kuranos. Fantastic early pick. Um, the Otters, they can respond with uh, some very strong picks of their own, Yamoja being one of those. A very strong support the game, so some slight sick changes Tremble, since the nerf to healing, and speaking nerf to healing, Guan Yu, a very strong top two, very strong front line here from the Otters. Uh, and that Guan Yu is, especially in the late game, can run down this Kernanos very easily with the cavalry charge. I love that pick, but they do have to be careful because he does have some counter matchups left on the board that Going Ghost can exploit. He does, but I, I have to agree with what you said at first there. The front line getting. Uh, locked in here for the otters is a very strong combo i like i like where their heads are at making sure that they have that uh you know tankiness locked down that ability to engage and set up uh they don't have to worry about that so they can just move into the rest of the draft knowing exactly how they're wanting to plan their team fights with with these two picks locked in uh it looks like an odin hover for going ghost i i like the odin and i like the merlin i feel like those are two very good uh picks in response to what the otters have grabbed so far i was just about to say as soon as they stopped talking i, I was about to say i would love to see an odin come out here from going ghost the uh otters do not have any way to get out of that cage right now odin shuts down all of the healing that Yamoja and Guan Yu can bring out. It also prevents the otters from looking somewhere like a Changa, like a Hell. Um, this is just a really, really strong pickup here for the Odin, plus the tons of lockdown with that cage by itself. And then the Merlin and Kernanos to follow it up. I love this top three from own. Going Ghost, but we see the Ho Yi locked in from the otters. This has to be a comfort pick because I don't think Ho Yi is that strong in the current meta. Yes. Everyone knows that his passive means that he gets crit once. He can't get crit again for a few seconds. I don't like that passive, and I don't think Kern knows much cares about that passive in the current <laughs> meta. But oh, ye, he can get out of Odin's cage. He can drop the suns down in that cage if his team's getting collapsed on. It's a fine pick come team fighting phase, but the laning phase is going to be super rough for that ho ye. I think I much more, more would have preferred to see something like. Oh, I just I was just about to say Sir Ket, but I realized Sir Ket's banned by going go, so that's not gonna work. Um I don't know. I just feel I just don't like the Ho Yi that much. But if it's a comfort pick for Tyler 2K, then who am I to judge? He just has to prove it to me. Yeah, exactly. I feel like it's probably could be a combination of it being a comfort pick, and as you said, it he is able to get out of that Odin cage, which is always nice when an Odin gets locked in a bit earlier in the draft to to make sure that you pick gods that have the ability to do that it, he does bring a lot more setup as well with the stun that he can hit or the knock up if he puts that mark onto an enemy god so he he adds into the the sort of uh you know pick centered comp that the otters have so far as we head into the second phase of bands we have a mercury and a hunbats taken away respectively yeah, I'm very surprised that Going Ghost are the ones that ban the Hoombats. Because imagine an Odin and a Hoombats diving on your back line. One cages you in, and the other makes sure that you are always running into the walls of said cage. This is that that Hoombats combo with the Odin would be fantastic. Maybe it's just not a comfort pick for Speedy. And with the lack of CC immunity in the kits of Kuranos and Merlin, they just wanted to take that away 
from Commodity in, in on the Otter side, but followed up by the Awelish. That's a really good pick of Ban, I mean, because Awelish really... I mean, she's the counter to <laughs> Ho-Yi and Yamoja. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Yamoja puts down the portal, jumps through, gets pulled back. Ho Yi goes up into the air. He's up in the air for a long time. A Wheelish could not know that he's um, leaping, turn around, and then ult before he lands. That I love the A Wheelish ban. Four jungle bans in the at the bottom. It makes a ton of sense, but that also does mean that you're leaving some very strong supports on the board, and more importantly, a very strong mid laner for Mr. Koala to take here, which I'm assuming is going to happen right here for the Otters. Is there a mid pick you are leaning towards wanting to see him go here in this uh, next slot? Well, I would love to see the Yu Huang. I don't love to see the Loki, but I'll talk about that later and answer your question now. I think that <laughs> Yu Huang is a, would be a really strong pick here. I mean, big circles, gets out of the Odin cage, just does a ton of damage, and is super safe, especially now that the Fenrir is locked in. I would love to see the Yu Huang here. For Mr. Koala, Morgan Le Fay would not be a bad choice either. But let's get back to this Loki pick. Um, so, there are so many junglers on the board, and you pick Loki before Fenrir is taken off the board. I don't... So, one thing that Loki does really well is that he's sneaky. He will burst someone down, and then leave the fight, with that, whether that's in a coffin or invisibility. It, it really does not matter as long as he takes down his targets. But that could also be a massive issue because with the backline that this going ghost squad has, especially now that the Terra is locked in, he, he will have he will find it being really hard to actually burst down one of the carries on the going ghost side. The Fenrir would just outscales him early on and has much better fight potential. So he he has to be watch, he has to watch out. I mean. Uh, for the early fights against that Fenrir. I just don't really like that Loki pick. The Tiamat pick, though, I do really like, especially into the Merlin. I don't think I have to explain that. It's just the classic matchup that we've been seeing yep. for a season and a half now. A hundred percent. And with what you're talking about with the Loki, I mean, he doesn't have a way to get out of the cage beyond having to commit his ult to do that, which isn't the most ideal situation. And Thor was available. To me, at least, yeah. Thor is just better in, in almost every way than the Loki, especially into the comp that Going Ghost has. He can get out of the cage with the hammer. He just is able to control the battlefield so well with that Anvil of Dawn and the walls. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it could be a comfort pick for commodity, something that he he just really likes. If it is, then he's lost all respect for me. Saying Loki is a comfort pick for someone is an instant <laughs> red flag. But no, I mean, Lo I mean, Thor was available. Bakasura was available. We could yeah, have okay. seen the we could have seen something like the Gilgamesh come out, which is really good into the team comp going ghost had. I mean, there's just a lot of options that were available. This Ho Yi and this Loki, they are the make and break for this Otters draft. I think that they drafted fantastically with the other three picks. I have to favor going ghost draft early though, specifically because I have don't have much faith in this Ho Yi and Loki going into the other side. It isn't that I don't think the gods are um, can hold their own in the current meta. I think that they can do fine. But looking across the board and in comp, that's something you have to do and have to take into consideration. I just don't see those two doing a whole lot. I gotta give the edge to the going ghost in the draft department. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of the more standard, uh, you know, what we know is good currently right now picks. So it's definitely uh, the onus is on the Otters to prove that this Ho Yi and this Loki are, you know, capable of taking these matchups and doing something well. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. You you said that this, if you know, in the early, this, this goes go and go sway. If we make it to, say, the 30, the 40 minute mark, everybody's full build with with 3k pots is uh are you still favoring going ghost in that scenario in that scenario it is all about engage it is it is pretty much who engages first if going ghost is in control of how the fight's going if this odin or this fenrir is able to, to pick someone off trap someone in right off the bat um, and just take them, burst them down, because that's kind of what their comp wants to do in, in these late-game team fights. 
I think that going ghost will take it. If the, the otters can get in, if this Guan Yu or this Loki can uh, get into the back line and take down one of these carries right off the bat, then I think they got the advantage. But I just do not think I just don't think that going ghost has a weak has the same amount of weaknesses that the otters comp does. The otters comp is very they they have to play it perfectly, pretty much. And the going ghost squad, they have a bit more room for error. So I th I think going ghost is just has the advantage throughout the entire game. But the otters, they do have ways to win this. They just have to play it perfectly. As we hop into the game, we'll have to find out if the otters can execute this different, slightly different draft than what we're used to seeing to that perfection. As you were talking about taking a look at some of the uh, early builds, everything to me at least seems pretty standard across the board. Looks like the Tiamat is going to head into the Book of Toth start, or maybe a Tablet of Destinies uh, would be the only kind of outlier that I see. Yeah, that is a massive outlier. That build got nerfed recently, and while Tiamat is still certainly one of the better characters to build it on, it just does not match the damage that it w that you would get if you went, say, Doom Orb first, which I'm assuming this Merlin's going, or Spear of Deso first. Um, there's just much better builds in the current meta for mid laners and mages as a whole. And so that this Tiamat, especially if he goes Book of Thoth, it's, he's really going to be struggling in this early game against this Merlin, which, again, I'm assuming is going the Do More build. Definitely. We saw Speedy Pico get a little low there, but a good double stun out of the Terra gets, allows them to get some more here poke comes on to Tyler 2K. And a, indeed, here comes Commodity on this Loki, trying to get some early pressure for his dual lane here. Does get a good amount of damage onto the Terra, who's now about half health, but she gets a good stun in response onto Tyler 2K, which should just end the gank. But I do like to see Commodity bringing that uh, early pressure over here into the dual lane to try and set up this non-traditional uh, Ho Yi pick. You know, you know who would have gotten that kill? A Thor. No, <laughs> there is I, this Loki. I, I'm not expecting a lot, as I was saying, from this early game, especially uh, compared to his opponent in the Fenrir. He just he just needs a bit more time to scale once he does get that Jotuns online, and then if maybe if he goes Hydra's next, then he then he'll really be able to fight. But Speedy should be taking as much advantage as he can through this early game, and I think once we see him hit level five, get that Ragnarok, we will be seeing this Fenrir get a lot more active. But it, and I mean even but now this Fenrir has the advantage in my opinion. Agreed. Fenrir can just bring bring so much in the early game. Loki definitely needs uh, some stuff online to get things done. We're seeing that you know, Ho Yi might not have the best clear, uh, especially in the early game, but Yamoja still does Yamoja things, uh, and they're able to get quite a bit of poke onto Guardian Wolf Soul's Terra. Uh, but, you know, he's a Terra. He can heal. He uh, shouldn't have any issues, but it is something to definitely keep an eye on as we continue moving forward with all of all of that all of the things that Yamoja can bring to these laning phases. Yeah, the Yamoja is just super strong. I mean, you have the shielding from uh, her too that just well, it it's just super strong and it's the reason Yamoja gets picked a lot. And of course, you got the ultimate as it looks like we got a bit of a stasis mode issue um, right now. We'll get that sorted out as soon as we can. But Yamoja she she's always been meta and the big reason for that is a she doesn't need mana she uses omi instead and b she the her ultimate the is just extremely good uh, during the team fights of spreading the fights out this yamoja and Terra. i mean this is this is i'm expecting to see a lot more of these matchups especially now the playoffs are coming are coming around i'm expecting to see this matchup a lot more um and I think that both of them are really good in the team fighting phase. Yamoja is a bit better early as because Terra notoriously has terrible one through five uh, lane pressure. Mm -hmm. But the Kuranos making up for that, and again, this is this is one is one of my problems with the Ho Yi. He just will get bullied in the early game as Ragnarok comes out, grabs the Odin, and Speedy Pico gets first blood. It was exactly what you were calling for. 
that Fenrir hit level 5, made a rotation, and instantly grabbed that first blood onto the Guan Yu there in solo, given going Ghost a little advantage here at the beginning. Uh, should allow Speedy Pico to spend that first blood bounty and uh, start to try and snowball this game from that jungle roll. Yeah, and th this is exactly what you want to do with as a Fenrir, especially against a Loki who needs that time to scale up, as we've been saying. A bit of a scuffle over here in left lane. The Loki commodity has, arrived, has joined the in. Is out. There is the alt in from Loki. Lots of damage onto this Cernanos, but it looks like he might be able to get out now, turning we're back around to Penal for his Terra, and Guardian Wolf so will end up falling to Commodity. So we saw Speedy Pico rotate over to Solo and get a kill for his squad, and Commodity made sure to respond on the other side of the map, knowing that Speedy wasn't going to be around. Speedy Pico needs to be careful here. Yes, Fenrir does have the much better uh, uh, early game fights, but he hadn't backed yet. That's a full Jotuns on the side of uh, Loki. Speedy Pico did just backed for his Jotuns, so if they would, if he would have continued to fight there, that would have been a little, that would have much favored commodity compared to Speedy Pico right there. Luckily, we don't see that, and now both junglers are equal in items. But you're not so upset about your Terra falling right there as you were compared to uh, the Odin. Um, or the Guan Yu, I'm sorry, falling. Because Odin, we, or Guan Yu needs a bit of a lead to really be effective, especially against this Odin, who's a direct counter to him. But Terra, I mean, Terra falls, and Terra will still do Terra things come late game. You don't really care if the Terra falls. I think the go, that going ghost still got the best out of that one-for-one -one trade across the map. Definitely, definitely. It's... Uh... You know, gives a little extra gold to commodity, helps him out, but nothing that's going to uh, to break the game by any means. As a bit of a skirmish happens there in mid, nothing too much coming of it. Looks like both supports opted to go for that prophetic start. Do you like prophetic uh, first item on both of these uh, different support picks? I th I think that I think that for these two picks specifically. Gauntlet of Thebes might be the better choice, uh, just a little bit easier to stack on these two. But when it comes to late game, and Terra and Yomoja certainly have the ability to get them stacked because they do have big AoE abilities, I think that once it's stacked, it's more worth it to, uh, than a fully stacked Gauntlet of Thebes. I just don't know how easy it will be to get those final stacks, but we might be seeing them held around 20 to 25 stacks when instead of the full 30 uh, come team fighting phase. So it's really just dependent on how aggressive these two want to be. And on Terra and y Yemoja, I don't know how aggressive you really want to be in the early game. Onyx might getting rotated on here on the Cernanos. Does manage to get the dash off, but the Loki ult and is good and does do a lot of damage to him. Can he make it under the tower? He's oh, the jukes. Juking, and oh, he will no. almost make it out, but Commodity has that tick damage and will get another kill under his belt, forcing Onyx to fall as the cage is out on the right side, and Speedy Pico will get another kill onto Twig. Fights happening on both sides of the map in the same way they were before, as it could be Guardian Wolfsoul in a bit of a trouble now. Uh, River's Rebuke is used to try and lock him down, but he's able to get out safely. It seems like Commodity wants to focus this dual lane, and Speedy Pico is more than happy to just keep targeting out Twig in the solo lane. And that and that is because of the matchups. In the solo lane, Speedy knows, okay, Odin can shut down this Guan Yu whenever I want it to. So let me go over as much as I can. Whenever that, uh, whenever that cage is up, Speedy will be in right lane. While on the other side, Commodity knows that Kurnos is just going to outpressure this Ho Yi, so he's going to try and help him as much as he can because Kurnos has a lot of trouble getting away from a Loki, especially in the early game without a support around him. So it's really just great. Uh, target um, awareness, I should say, uh, from both junglers on where they want to put pressure, and evidently it's working for both sides. So it's re it's really just dependent on the rest of the team, because we know where the junglers want to play. Will the rest of the team play the same way? 
Definitely. We see Speedy Pico still hovering around here in this dual lane, dropped the shield buff, and was thinking about trying to set something else up here, but it's backed out for a moment, but now we have a big rotation. The solo laner has made it all the way over here to the left-hand side. Cavalry Charge and Ragnarok getting used there to try and get some picks. We see lots of damage going on to the Terra, who will end up following Guardian Wolf Soul, dropping there to Tyler 2K. A rotation out of Conjure as well. He does commit Ooh, the cage, great, jumping into four. Cage. Nice stun as well from this uh, Fenrir, but Pico not able to get the kill. Yamoja is extremely low, but Jacob should be able to safely get out. It's a lot of rotations from both sides, and it's because this Gold Fury is here, and they will decide to pull it right now as we see Conjure trying to zone nice. out the rest of the team. But it looks like the damage is too good onto Twig, and he will fall for the third time this game. But Commodity turns one back around on Pico. Hello, health bars everywhere. Ooh. But Commodity can't get out. Buddy getting credit for the kill in there in that one, ending up in a in this fight ending up in the favor of Going Ghost so far. Yeah, that that fight started off so well for the Otters. Fantastic communication for Twig to come in when he did and Conjuration Knight, just a little late on his rotation, ended up costing him uh, his support's life. But, I mean, a fantastic cage, a fantastic Ragnarok from Speedy Pico. I don't think anyone appreciates that he picked up Twig and took him away from his ADC that instead of trying to hold him there for a little extra damage. Fantastic awareness there from Speedy Pico. But when Conjuration Knight did eventually make the rotation in, the health bars were just so low on the Otters, they couldn't stick around. And great, great call there from Going Ghost to go straight to that Gold Fury. And a bit of an overextension from Commodity just means that they don't get the Gold Fury and they lose two lives on the side of Otters. So what was a very promising fight ends up just really, really favoring the Otter, or Going Ghost in the end. Definitely, this Twig's Guan Yu now is 0-3, which is not the start you want for a Guan Yu. As you said, Guan Yu, a, a god that definitely wants to have that uh, kind of lead, and he does go for that Vital Amplifier in the first item slot. Huh. Is, is it... I've, I've always thought that Sekhmet's is the better in that tree if you're going to pick something up like that for Guan I Yu. Absolutely. I mean, Sekhmet's pro so Vital Amplifier, you need to stack it, right? And yes, Guan Yu's heal is on a very low cooldown. But what is he going to do with that extra attack speed and attack power? He just doesn't want to be using his basic attacks all that much. But if he has Sekhmet's, then his abilities are up so much more often. I don't really like the Vital Amplifier. Yes, its stats are really good. And a Guan Yu does, does not mind that. But Sekhmet's Scepter stats are also insanely good. And so I don't really understand the Vital Amplifier. If he, if the Guan Yu heal was a ticking heal, like say Surter's or Chalks, then that is a much better pickup. But I'm not a big fan of that Vital Amplifier commodity just a little late here as <laughs> Onyx luckily gets his back off on time. Saw him there with that ward, knew he was on the way, but got the back off right on time as a pyro skirmish starts off here speedy pico doing a bit of zoning for his squad merlin has that burn damage to get it through river's rebuke is used to try and secure it here as we do see it go the way nice of cage. going ghost and conjuration will get a kill as well on top of that going ghost pick up the pyromancer and a kill onto jacob with a very well placed cage as you said there I was so confused as to why Speedy was taking the Emoja away from his team instead of keeping her there, because she surely dies. It, it, they could get the Pyromancer, and Yamoja has no escape. She was out of Mo Omi. She, they could have just turned and burned and killed that Yamoja as well. Uh, but seeing that Conjuration was coming over and knowing that the cage was up, just fantastic play there from Speedy. And Conjuration Knight extends his lead now about a level and a half uh, above this Guan Yu and going ghost I mean they've gotten every single objective but they're only up 1.2k which means that the otters despite everything they're still farming relatively well they're not out of this by any means but they do need to continue farming up because if they continue to fall any lower 
then the late game, it won't be looking so good. She had a little bit different take on the builds here in the dual lane. Uh, uh, Devo's gloves uh, picked up there by Onyx as a skirmish is happening around this gold fury. Buddy does get a kill on Mr. Koala off screen, and we see charging forward is guarding Wolf Soul trying to get some CC, some setup for his squad. And it seems like they will use the Ragnarok there on this Yamoja. Oh, little miscommunication. Who can just riptide her way out of there. The suns come down and force out the Terra alt as well as the cage lands, trapping in uh, the, the squad of the otters there, just mostly used for peel. All the while, the gold fury was getting used. It's low, and it goes away with the cyberpunk otters. Onyx picks up the gold fury and a kill before falling to twig. That is job done for the Cernanos as it looks like it's just all about retreat now for going ghosts that fight not going the way they wanted rivers review trying to trap them in put off paths that they can get through and guarding wolf soul is in a lot of trouble will fall to twig who picks up his second kill this fight conjuration should be tanky and healthy enough to walk away from the rest of the otters but it looks like they're just going to try and secure their green buff. He He's not done. He's jumping in, charging up that spear. He knows his Merlin's got damage, and they turned around quite a bit. Speedy Pico is he back is and goes to. in as well onto Jacob. Not quite able to finish the kill, but a lot of damage getting turned around onto this Otter Squad. But fight definitely in their favor. Onyx stealing that Gold Fury was very big for the Otters. That was, so I, I complimented Going Ghost on their first Gold Fury attempt. I said that they had fantastic shot calling, fantastic communication. They looked like they were on point there, despite the late uh, rotation there by Conjuration Knight compared to Twig. In that second take, they looked off. They did not look together at all. It looked like half of the people were calling to go for Gold Fury. The other half, specifically Pico, <laughs> was said, hey, <laughs> I got the, uh, we can get this Yamoja and went in. In the end, only him and Guardian, Wolf Soul, were there to do any damage to that Yamoja, which is not exactly what you want to see. And in the end, it ended up costing them the Gold Fury. They do pick up Commodity, but they lose two on the backside for it. This, that was just not very, not very good. Well done by Ragnarok the used again Ragnarok. as we. Get some damage onto Jacob, and it looks like he will end up falling to Buddy. That was Ragnarok and the Terra alt used to confirm that kill on the support, who now drops to 0-2. Yeah, that 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 is what should have happened the first time. <laughs> that was that's what should have happened around the Gold Fury. They were they're just a little late on it, but now they get the pick, and that's a free power master because of the pick. No one can really step up from the otters. That is exactly what should have happened around the Gold Fury. Why it didn't happen, the world may never know. But now they extend their lead to about 1k. It should be a little bit higher than that. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Some misplays happen to everyone. Yeah, they definitely do. Uh, we can see that uh, Tyler 2k is actually fairly high up here on use the, the damage bomb on the tier one? As they did use the bomb. And it looks like a fight is happening around this tier one. I did not expect uh, quite the defense out of the Otters, and I definitely didn't expect the bomb to be dropped on the Tier 1 tower, and the Tier 1 tower didn't Tyler's end up here. falling. Tyler is here on this rotation, does some damage, and stuns out Speedy Pico as the rest of this going Ghost Quad, Quad do step up, are forced to shell from the damage coming out of this Otters team. They, they really want this Tier 1 to fall. It's gotten, like... No health sitting there, but it doesn't seem like the Otters are wanting to give it up as we see more rotations coming through. Both Onyx and Conjuration are here. Conjuration jumping in and does cage in three separate members by himself while Speedy Pico takes out Mr. Koala in the back line. Good Cernan Assault gets the beads out of everyone and he still gets the kill onto Jacob. Ragnarok used as well should result in a kill onto Twig. Here comes Commodity though, and he does get one for his troubles. Guardian Wolf so falling, but the damage turned around on this Loki afterwards is too much. That is a one for four trade in favor of going Ghost, and they got the tier one in mid. Uh, I mean, I wasn't a fan of the bomb going down on that tier one tower. 
I certainly wasn't a fan of using the River's Rebuke to save a Tier 1 tower. It's a Tier 1 tower, guys. <laughs> yes, the mid lane Tier 1 tower is the most important on the map. Who, Whichever Tier 1 falls first, that, that team just loses a lot of map presence and safety. But it's a Tier 1! Why are we <laughs> fighting so much over a mid-Tier 1 when Gold Fury's on the board, when Fire Giant's on the board? I mean... So the otters, I consider that a massive misplay. Now they're down a, a little over under 4k. This is that's just that fight could not have gone worse if you're an otters fan. Yes, you get a pick, but you lose four and the tier one tower. It's they should not have. They should have just given it up at that point. Yeah, definitely not ideal. Does result in a gold fury going the way of going ghost as well. And they have the more aggressive positioning around this fire giant pit, getting that vision down to try and control what will be the first fire giant dance of this match. Both teams know that, you know, this is a best of one. This is single elimination. So they're, they're both wanting to make sure that this goes their way. And right now going ghost is doing a good job of making sure that they are the ones in control as Calvary Charge gets used to Terra all in response. The Suns drop as well, and it will be Tyler 2K getting the kill onto Buddy. Rivers Rebuke and the Cage are both used there as well as damage goes through onto both sides. Conjuration ups, downs as it, <clears throat> this Guardian Wolf Soul is in a bit of trouble. Low health Gu bars, but doing a great job of set, uh, setting up his team. Yeah, Guardian Wolf Soul should surely fall here. The Fire Giant is leashed, and Conjuration Knight and Speedy Pico just taking damage for no reason. A big crit onto Commodity right there. And now Conjuration Knight looks like he wants the pick there. Gonna jump into three people. He's tanky enough. I don't think he should fall here, and it looks like he will make his way out. But now Speedy, inspired by his soul, and you're gonna go in, catch Commodity, but with he does have access to the Ragnarok, but is not gonna get off in time. Jungle for jungle right now. Going Ghost, they are throwing this lead that they had. They, they were not grouped up there at all. That fight was never in their favor. And as soon as Guardian Wolf Soul fell, they should have just backed off. I'm not entirely sure why they continue to go in. But, I mean, they, they made their choice and they paid for it. It really did. My voice died in the middle of that fight. <laughs> uh, not sure what happened to me there either, but I liked the aggression that I saw out of going Ghost at the beginning, but then as you said, they never fully grouped. They didn't have... It didn't seem like they had a game plan. Buddy was in trouble really early in that fight and never quite got any sort of peel. He wasn't in a position where anybody could get to and ended up falling right off the bat, which just was the go button for the Otters who uh, swing the gold... Uh, back in their favor a bit only now 2k or so down 2400 here at the 21 minute mark this the going ghost squad i still stand by that going ghost has a much better team fight the issue is that you need to be grouped to be able to use that team fight you will it does i don't care what composition you have you will not win a 3v5 99 percent of the time speedy pico was there but he wasn't with his uh, team at all. He was clearing minions in right lane and the re the entirety of the Cyberpunk autos just collapsed on him. You can't ha be having fights like that at all. The otters are just looking like a much better squad. They're playing like the, uh, like a team and now Speedy Pico has to use the Ragnarok in order just to survive. That's a massive ultimate down. Otters, they're in, they are have a massive bit of favor in this fight right now. They do, as they did the same play they did last time. Conjuration, though, gets the cage off. Terra all comes out as well. Cavalry charged used, but he's in a lot of trouble. Will manage to get through for the moment, but the Suns do good damage, and Speedy Pico will end up falling, as it looks like Going Ghost is still trying to be on the aggressive here, but Commodity is around what is going as well. On? Tyler 2K, get credit for that pick. Onyx does drop Commodity in response, but he has no health remaining. He's on the retreat. Tyler 2K with the triple kill Onyx is, in this Onyx fight. Is, no. And that's got to be a free fire giant. There's, that, that there's is no world gonna be a fire, we're going fire to step up. I mean, Buddy has to look for a steal here, but he's a Merlin. He does not have sec secure on his side, co especially compared to what the Otters have. Fire giant down below 25%. Blue buff giving away his position, and now he is in a lot of trouble. He stole it! He ended he... up stealing it! 
he stole it with the void stance one the, the cyberpunk otter is unable to out secure a single ability that they knew was coming from this merlin that completely turns things around on its head especially with onyx getting this oni fury at the same time i don't know what happened in that pit that didn't allow the otters to secure that fire giant i mean i they I don't know how to analyze what <laughs> happened, how they stole that. Instead, I'm going to say the Earth and Fury comes out. Tyler 2K in a lot of trouble. Wild Hunt secures that kill for Speedy, but now Speedy has to get out, gets uses the Ragnarok to, for the extra speed, and gets out just before River's Review hits. Onyx takes down Commodity, and the cage comes out. Down goes Twig. Perfect fight for the Goat and Ghost. Perfect fight indeed. It is just Jacob left on this Yamoja, the only one of the Cyberpunk Otters left standing, and in the middle of five people who all have Fire Giant around their waist. The chase is good, and there's no world, and Jacob does not end up falling to Speedy Pico here. Just trying to buy as much time as possible to slow down the siege of this going Ghost Squad. I, I mean, Buddy sets up this whole play by himself by getting that Fire Giant allowing them to be aggressive and that's i mean this this left side phoenix end, is done do they? they might tyler 2k just now on the respawn will have twig and commodity here in a moment but they are into this titan room and they want to put the game to bed right now titan falling low in health but they tyler can't. 2k is lower it does not look like they will have the damage to do it mr koala gets a kill onyx does turn one back around onyx turns two around but Commodity responds with a double kill of his own. Speedy Pico will die to the Phoenix. Commodity getting credit for another triple kill there. The end call might have been a little ambitious. Still two tier two towers left standing on the side of the Cyberpunk Otters. As Onyx is trying to catch out Mr. Koala and will. So much damage out of that. Sononos who has that Deathbringer available now. Yeah, uh, Crit didn't get nerfed, by the way. Uh, Crit is still the exact same as it always has been. Um, but I do, that isn't the worst call they would have made. I would have preferred if they backed up after getting that left Phoenix. You get a free tier two in mid, can back up, spend some of that gold, and then maybe try and siege right or set up for the next Fire Giant, your call. All that they lost was Fire Giant. They're not going to lose the next one because they're all going to be up in time. And instead, oh. Onyx goes Goblin mode and gets two kills after his entire team died. That very well might have secured the next Fire Giant because Loki will be coming up about 10 to 15 seconds before Fire Giant spawns. So he he won't be in a very good position to contest it. I mean, Onyx may have just... <laughs> completely made every criticism I had of that oblivious uh, because <laughs> they they are non-relevant I mean because they can know they now have the positioning around fire giant once again or the advantage around fire giant once again I mean they do and it looks like they're trying to catch up Mr. Koala who will be able to jump away to safety it seems like they're deciding they're just going to take this tier 2 in mid they don't need the fire giant for that get a little bit of extra gold they got the pyromancer at the same time so they'll have a bomb for this next siege and cyberpunk otters knowing that it's not worth trying to hard defend this tier 2 27 oh, minutes guardian, in but guardian might have overextended is on the run the chase is no, gone by the otters but it does look like it should be uh all good for the terra of the going ghost squad I was earlier in the game gonna ask as I won't oh, have a chance to talk cage. as a cage and Rivers Rebuke I'll both get channeled there. Shell popped and it's the aggression is on the side of the going ghost squad who got Twig very low who's forced to back up there. But it doesn't seem like any kills will come of it. They will step up and take away this tier two, which, you know, the otters you know, they're not going to defend that. There's no reason to do that. But now that is both tier twos out of the way as Going Ghost can back up to this Fire Giant. So when they begin their siege in proper, they won't have to deal with either of those towers. Yeah, if I'm the Otters, I'm not stepping up to this at all. Earth and Fury used on Fire Giant for some reason. That is a pretty big cooldown, and it doesn't affect Fire Giant. Very questionable ultimate choice, but... The Otters, I think, made the best choice there. Don't They shouldn't have stepped up. They were in a losing fight, and they needed to defend their Titan from fire minions anyway. 
Um, so I do not mind that. They have a pretty decent base defense if they don't throw themselves at a tier two and get caught <laughs> out. Uh, I think that I think that they have a pretty decent base defense. The Suns, if needed, are very good at clearing. You have the Guan Yu and the Loki for engage. You have the Rivers Rebuke that, to just stop any sort of engage that going ghost might have. You have a very good base defense. The issue is they they have not proven that they are fine fighting under a Phoenix. They would rather fight out in the jungle where they're at a disadvantage. Uh, so if they group up under this left side Phoenix, I think that they have a chance, but it looks like that's not what, what is going to happen. <laughs> Almost getting caught out there trying to uh, secure a green buff got leashed all the way over towards purple. As this going ghost squad steps up, they have the wave in mid and in left. Looks like they're going for a bit of a 4-1 split right now. That left side Phoenix does not have a lot of health yet. It will not take too many autos from Onyx to get the job done. As they just dance, biding their time. They know they have another wave coming. Speedy keeping the attention of Commodity in mid. I do think that the Cyberpunk Otters have a good chance to defend here. And we'll see how they want to play it as we get the blink in from conjuration rivers rebuke amused immediately to split the fight meanwhile the cage is dropped in the back left side phoenix will end up falling the suns and earthen fury are pulled out there as this going ghost squad rotate towards the middle lane trying to get the second bird on this siege that first one was very clean lots of alts getting used but no picks coming from it as the mid bird falls extremely quickly and going ghosts are just gonna sweep the phoenixes head right over to this right lane they don't need efg they are just burning these birds and they will get all three phoenixes down putting cyberpunk otters in an extremely tough position to try and come back and uh, win this game and advance the playoffs and they are right to back up here they know that the last tower to attack they have fire giant and they don't have titans that boot or towers i mean that boost that titan's health Wait, so this may have been gone a little bit better, but they're playing it safe. One mistake. Remember, this is a best of one. If you lose this game, you don't get a second chance or a third chance. This is it. Lose and go home. So I'm, I love that Going Ghosts are playing it safe here. They get the Phoenixes. They're going to back, get the Pyromancer, spend that gold, and get set up for next fire, which is coming up in about a minute and a half, maybe a little bit less. Uh, yeah, fire just wore off, so exactly a minute uh for going ghost and cyberpunk autos they have to defend against three fire waves i think that they have to give up this next fire giant they don't have much of a choice but that i mean they played that see that phoenix defense perfectly and you can tell they played it perfectly because no one on their team died mm -hmm. but it didn't matter because they lost all three phoenixes anyway that's why i was saying going ghost they have just such a good team fight in comp that I don't know how Cyberpunk Autos fight into it. Because even when they play it perfectly, they lose everything anyway. Would you like to see the Otters send, like, one person towards this Fire Giant as kind of a Hail Mary steal, kind of replicate what Buddy did earlier on the Merlin? Or do you just want them to, to completely give it up, the nut, which is, looks like what they're doing? I don't think that, well, it looks like they might be stepping up, possibly sending commodity. I don't think anyone should step up to this. I think that they should just give it up. It is an EFG, so it is a little bit risky, but Fire Giant falling very low. Commodity's here. He is invisible, and Going Ghost is able to secure it. Suns come down, and Tyler2k stepped up very far, but it looks like he will not get caught out. Uh, very, very well played there by Going Ghost. Otters, they, they tried. You can't fault them for that. But now you lost a very good team fighting ultimate for that tower, for that Titan defense. If the go if Going Ghost wanted to, they could have just stepped in right now, knowing that ultimate was down. Instead, they want to get the Oni Fury that's spawning here very soon. Get three waves of Oni Fire Manes, which is scary to think about. Yeah. Um, but I mean, look at what Fire Manes are doing to the Otters Titan by itself. That was full health when they took down three ti three. Ti both or all three phoenixes now it's down to about three quarters going ghost they just kind of have to walk in and they don't even have to win the fight as long as they're fighting in the titan room i think they just win the game so the otters if you you have to fight outside of your titan room because this merlin and this kurinos 
they can just end the game by themselves if you are fighting inside the Titan room. So you have to meet them at the Phoenixes. Definitely. And as you said, if they decide to buy their time, that three waves of Oni Fire minions are now making their way down each lane. So they have the ability to just let the sort of PvE aspect of this game help them here in what could be the final fight of this match. Both teams are just feeling each other out right now. Going Ghost the knows that they can wait. But yes, the, the Winions are doing damage here. Going Ghost hasn't even stepped into the Titan room. They're just making sure that these waves are able to push forward, clearing out both left and mid. And the Oni Fire Wave is here and starting to step up into the Titan room now from this mid lane. It looks like Going Ghost is happy to just let that pressure go out as they wait to make sure that this right side bird falls down, but the, the, the waves are crashing again, and here comes the engage. Conjuration with the cage lands in the middle. Rivers Rebuke used to try and split up the fight, but the damage from Buddy is good as Speedy Pico gets a kill as well, and Going Ghost take this best of one over the Cyberpunk Otters. They will progress out of the gauntlet and make it to playoffs next week. All right, guys, I know I was praising you guys for playing it safe earlier, but the Titan was half health. You took down the left side Phoenix, so it wasn't going to be healing anytime soon. You didn't have to worry about that. I don't know why they didn't just jump in and end it, but, I mean, you can't argue with results when they did. The Titan mm -hmm. died almost instantly, and, I mean, that's what I was saying. The Otters, they can't fight under their own Titan. They had to meet them at the Phoenixes. Because if they did get into the Titan room, it was just going to end. Unfortunately, the Otters, they couldn't find an avenue in. And congratulations to Going Ghost. They will be moving on to the playoffs. Unfortunately, for the Otters, that's the end of the season for them. A very uh, good and entertaining match to start us off here uh, on the beginning of our Saturday of Gauntlet matches. Now that we've finished up this match we will be taking off towards a merlin division game next so you definitely don't want to go anywhere and we will be back with that in just a few moments Watch out if your enemies are road ahead of full proxy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day like the bones clean. I feed him all the hate and he grows me and he gets caught. You're a big piss off quick and if you cross him, you might drop dead. Metaphorically, of course, settling the sword, never getting bored. Loves the blood and gore. Always wanting more freedom from the source. They don't really understand until they feel the force departed. If you start shit, you'll be heartless in the darkness. Torn apart quick, you left scars ripped. You'll be chewed up and discarded. And this world ain't right, won't accept it Negative energy, I expect it Once it's in your mind, it's infectious So fight for your life and reject it You better give me space, I'm protective My adrenaline spikes when I'm threatened And if you stay in my way, I'm aggressive Cause when there's no legs, it'll kill when I'm desperate
Your change over time I guess who was right My parents thought you'd kid Make everything alright You want to be different But you're still ignorant You want to have control You run away from home Desperately looking for strength No place you can go No one to stand by your side To scare, to get help You want to have control
They like to judge me before they get to know me. But while you're talking, I was getting me some money. Flying across the country, now they're flying for me. Broke a record back in Boney, that's a different story. Major damage, looking loaded. They start to panic. Standing frozen, ground is shaking. 
you close in the night in my arms and when we all Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the uh, Camelot Smite League Gauntlet Games. We were going to start the Merlin Division. However, it seems that Order of the Blight is going to win the first game off of the Royal Jesters by forfeit. So we'll be waiting until 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, at which point it will be Order of the Blight Merlin versus Bodega Hive Merlin. Can't wait to see you all there. 